We haven't talked about chamfering vertices. I don't use that very often, but it's nice to know it's there. If I select a vertex and push this button, I've created a little plane, a little triangular polygon out of that vertex. If the vertex is shared by four polygons, and I click my chamfer button, it'll create more of a diamond shape there instead of a triangle. And I can scale that, I can extrude that out, I can do all sorts of fun things with it. You'll also notice when you extrude a face that by default this manipulator tool is oriented on the axis of the plane that's been extruded. So this allows me to pull out that extrusion not according to the axes of the world but according to the local axis of the planes that I've extruded. That can be really useful. Okay, in addition to the other tools we have, we also have what's called cut faces. That's this tool right here. This is going to allow me to, as if with a razor blade, slice through several faces at once. So I want to make sure that I'm in the right viewport so that when I use the cut faces tool, I can cut those faces together in a way that works for what I want to do because that cut faces tool is going to cut through multiple faces at once. So if I'm not careful, everything that's selected will be cut along this line, and I can get that wrong. So in this case, I'll take a top view, and I'll start right about where I want to cut those. If I hold down the shift key while I'm holding this button, it'll snap that cut faces tool to a 90 degree angle or a 45 degree angle. When I let go, now I've made the cut, and it is slicing through all eight of those planes. That's a quick way to add some additional edges to your geometry, cut faces. I'm going to go ahead and delete these faces now. The next tool in the line is called Merge Vertices, or Border Edges. So if I take these edges and I scale them together so that they're near each other, and then I go ahead and select the vertices associated with them, I can click this button, Merge Vertices. Those vertices that are within the threshold will become one. Now if I just select that vertex, I can test it to see if I've got one there. So I can click that and lift it up. And I can always undo it to move it back where it was. But now that I know that those vertices are merged together and I've got a single skinned object there, now I can scale those down even further to almost to a point or a little edge there. So merging vertices is really useful and edges. I think of merging vertices as almost like sewing. If I scale these two vertices together and I merge them, it's like I've stitched those two points together to create new geometry. Now if I want to move two or more vertices together, I can just select those two or three vertices and using my scale function, bring them close to each other. That's when I can hit the merge button and merge them into a single vertex. But let's say I want to move one vertex on top of another one. How do I do that? Well, there's a thing called snapping, which is what these magnet tools are for. You can explore those. But while you're modeling, you can get a shortcut to the snapping and I can snap one vertex to another by holding down the V key, V is in Virgil, and you'll see my manipulator there changes from a square to a circle, indicating that the snapping function is engaged. So if I then move that vertex, it wants to snap to any of the other vertices that it finds, and it's snapping exactly to the location where they are. So let me do that again here, hold down the V key, and move that vertex right on top of another one. And now those vertices aren't merged, there's still three of them, they're just on top of each other. So I need to select all of them by dragging a marquee around them if I want to merge them and hit the merge key. Now they are one vertex. I can check that by deselecting it and just clicking once on the vertex and dragging it. Now I can pretty much be sure that that's one vertex. If I'm in doubt I can also select a face, move it, and if the other ones come up with it then those vertices are merged together. Really useful for closing gaps, stitching geometry together, and cleaning things up in your scene, making your geometry more efficient. Not only do we have a Merge Vertex tool, we also have what's called Merge Edge tool. The Merge Edge tool will try to merge edges at your direction. So if I select these two and click Enter or Return, it will merge them if it's possible. So this can be another way of stitching things together, merging edges. Another useful tool is called Collapse, which allows you to collapse all the selected edges or faces into a single point. So if I get my edges and I select this exterior loop and I use the Collapse tool, click it once, and I can collapse all those edges to a single point. It's now one vertex. I can do the same with faces, collapse that face to a single point. This can be a way of streamlining your geometry to get rid of faces that you don't need, turn those faces into points. And we talked about extract faces already, but here's a button for it. So now I've extracted those faces from that object. One little trick that's kind of cool that I think maybe we covered already, there's this thing called snapping. Snapping allows me to move to these specific points on the grid, for example, or I can move to specific vertices, snap to specific vertices, and this allows me to really align things. I can snap one vertex over another, and the way I'm doing this is I'm holding down 
the hotkey X while I'm moving, you can see that the manipulator changes and becomes a circle when I'm holding down that snap key. So the X will snap to places on the grid. I can also hold down V and that will snap to vertices in my scene. Even if I'm not in wireframe mode, if I'm shaded here, if I hold down V, it'll go ahead and continue to snap to those vertices. Otherwise, you're just freeform moving, which is great. You can actually even turn snapping on here with these icons, these little magnets up here. The first one is snap to grid, so when I have that toggled on, it will always be snapping to the grid whether I have the hotkey held down or not. So if this is happening, you might have accidentally toggled your snaps on. You can even hide this whole drawer here if you want those out of the way.